Good morning, Siouxland. It is Sunday, January 7th, just after 6 o'clock in the morning. We have a great show planned for you this morning. We are currently not seeing any snow out there right now, but that is expected to change within the next 18 to 24 hours, and uh, we're preparing for that. At least I know I'm preparing for it as First Alert meteorologist Carmelo Latuca joins me now. So, Carmelo, uh, snow is on the way. That's right, Jessica. I'm in whole Iowa at the community building where you can see behind me chairs have been set up and they're kind of getting ready for everything to unfold. People will arrive here uh, in between 6 and 6.30 and then the caucus will start at 7. One thing that will be important to follow is uh, the presidential preference here in Sioux County. We are nine days until the Iowa Republican caucus and the candidates continue to campaign across the state of Iowa, hoping to gain support and voters. Candidates know time is running out to sway undecided Iowa voters. Last night, former President Donald Trump made his case to voters in Sioux Center. The former president focused on personal grievances against prosecutors and touched on both domestic and foreign policies. KTIV's Matt Hoffman takes us there. Clayton, what can you tell us about what you see right now? Yeah, what I can tell you, Al, is as I step aside, you can still see some residual smoke and uh, obviously all the grass just black, and you can smell that smell of smoke here as well. And what we know right now is there's been no evacuations ordered as of yet. This fire started at around 3.30 last evening. It started as a structure fire. An Ida County, Iowa jury has convicted a Galva man of murdering his brother in November of 2022. Jesus Diaz was initially charged with first-degree murder in that case, and prosecutors allege Jesus Diaz stabbed his brother Eduardo several times after an argument, but jurors convicted him of a lesser second-degree murder charge. Diaz faces a maximum sentence of 50 years in prison when he's sentenced on March 22nd. One of the unique things the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center allows is the ability to bring the action to life like this example of Sergeant Charles Floyd talking. Our crew is gathering the latest information on the status of the roads out and about as we are joined right now by KTIV's Katie Koppel, who is out in the elements this morning with photographer Acacia Phillips. Acacia is in the driver's seat. Katie is in the passenger seat. As it looks like you're at a, a red light at an intersection right now. Katie, uh, where are you uh, right now as you're uh, moving throughout Siouxland? Uh, Katie, uh, I know earlier in the show we joined you uh, from the, the interstate. Would you say that is uh, marginally better or are, are kind of conditions uh, the same throughout those uh, two uh, different roads? If the bond is passed, it will impact the students here in Ironton, but also in Hayward in Iowa, where the plan would be to ditch these two portable classrooms and expand the permanent space in the elementary school. Senate negotiators have reportedly reached a deal on immigration. Details are scarce right now, but sources say it would provide more power to significantly restrict illegal immigration at the southern border. It would also speed up the asylum process to consider cases within six months. Right now, it could take up to 10 years. The deal could be unveiled as soon as next week, but House Speaker Mike Johnson is already saying it's dead on arrival if it's what's being reported. What happened in whole Iowa this evening? Yeah, the turnout was uh, pretty good, Jessica. In whole Iowa, there was about 236 people that came to caucus, but it was Trump winning with around 52% of the votes. Only two representatives got up to speak for candidates. Those candidates were former President Donald Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis was in a close second place with 95 votes compared to Trump's 123. Congressman Randy Feenstra, who lives in Hull, says the high voter turnout showcases the pride Sioux County voters have. Clayton, what do you think? I'm going with C. You're going, going with, C? with C? Well, I'll have the answer at the back, end of the show. Back in the day, I feel like when I was doing these multiple choice quizzes, I would just pick C if I didn't know the answer. So It's not a bad idea. You got a one in four shot with that. There was work to be done on this 3,000 acre field outside of Laurel, Nebraska on Thursday. Combines harvested Joel Johnson's corn crop. He couldn't. He's in Boston battling a rare bone cancer doctors diagnosed in July. Johnson says it's one of the hardest things he has ever done, but he says the harvest help means a lot. It's just been a whole community get together to help us out through this, and it's just been so grateful. I'm so grateful for everything that everyone's done to, for us so far. One thing is for certain, these corn stalks won't just go away. 
And that is why Farm Rescue is here with help from family and friends to make one final push to have a complete harvest. Jerry Johnson, Joel's dad, was driving one of those combines. He said he's glad he could help. The way it's kind of humbling to see so many good people doing so many good things. I feel very grateful and humble. Farm Rescue, a nonprofit that helps family farms, sends resources to farms that need help using a variety of sponsors. A big one is Bush Light and its corn can 30 packs. For each 30 pack sold, a small percentage of the sale goes to Farm Rescue. So we want to come in and make sure that we're doing a great job for them and obviously be sensitive to all the issues that are going on with the, with the family and their health issues. Joel's stepson knows exactly what to do. He's helped the harvest for years. You can really tell. It makes him happy seeing everyone out here helping. Most days, Joel calls to check on the harvest, but thanks to Farm Rescue, he can focus on his treatment. I think I'm the fourth generation living in the, in the same house, and it, it just means so much to, to me and to my dad and my grandma that's still alive. Joel says he looks forward to the day he can be back on the farm and put cancer out to pasture. Near Laurel, Nebraska, Clayton Anderson, KTIV News 4. Outside on the grounds of Sioux City's wastewater treatment plant, you can see caution tape, severe sinking, and cracks in the concrete and concrete walls. Even the rebar is exposed. Inside, you can see the sign of age as well. Standing water on the ground, corroded pipes. There's even a water sprayer on to try to remove standing water. And as you can see behind me, the cracks are starting to show. The EPA and Iowa DNR's concerns is the, the state of this facility is at a critical level. Sioux City Utilities Director Tom Pingle says part of the heavy corrosion to pumps and infrastructure is due to the pollutant level of the wastewater before it's processed. In Iowa, the pollutant level of Sioux City's wastewater is second only to Cedar Rapids. Pingle is confident the proposed changes will be adequate for the DNR. We've been working with them, uh, you know, monthly. We've had extensive meetings with them leading up to this point. They're supportive of this project. Uh, so we just need to get the facility plan submitted. Pingle, who's been utilities director for two years, says past communication about the state of the plant could have been better. I think in the past, the, the leaders of this facility didn't ring enough alarm bells and tell the council the full extent of what's going on down here. So uh, it's just a, maybe a communication issue that occurred, and here we are. We're, this is where we are today. In Sioux City, Clayton Anderson, KTIV News 4.